Hey guys, welcome to my episode 3 and 4 review of Pokemon Sun and Moon, the anime. Now, just like last week, we got a 1 hour special. Last week we got 1 and 2, this time we get 3 and 4. But these two episodes were a lot more exciting than episode 1 and 2. For starters, we get to see Team Rocket coming to Alola. Now, I was wondering episode 1 and 2 whether we would see Team Rocket or not, but we do see him now in episode 3. I think this is the latest we've ever seen Team Rocket debut in the anime, but... You know, it wouldn't be Pokemon without Team Rocket, so... Anyways, there's like some short backstory of why they came to Alola. I'm guessing, um... Giovanni just wants some cool Alolan Pokemon, and he wants to catch Alolan Pokemon. Something generic like that. You don't really need a good reason. All you need to know is that they're coming to Alola, so... They're gonna try and, you know, foil Ash's adventure once again. Next, we see... Ash and uh, Professor Kukui in the laboratory and we get to see how actually Rotom goes inside the Pokedex to create the Rotom Pokedex and it looks like the Rotom Pokedex is one of a, one of a kind like in other regions a lot of people have their own Pokedex but I guess in Alola Rotom Pokedexes are very hard to come by but Ash gets one and it's really cool how the animation goes when Rotom enters the Pokedex and how he looks as a Rotom Pokedex. The art and animation really showcase the goofiness and the silliness of this new anime and how uh, Rotom Pokedex interacts with the characters. With X and Y, you wouldn't be able, the animation, you wouldn't be able to have this kind of wacky style to it like Sun and Moon, so in that regards, the animation looks really nice. And when the Rotom Pokedex is actually debut, we can actually see him speaking Japanese. And uh, you know, it's something I haven't actually thought about before, but it does make sense if a Rotom goes inside the Pokedex to become a Rotom Pokedex, it shouldn't be, it should be able to speak the Japanese language and not just uh, have Pokemon noises. But it's also pretty cool that he doesn't know all Japanese, so he still has to learn some Japanese. I guess he doesn't know like what the slang is, so so when Ash says Suge, he has to actually process what Suge means, because I guess that's slang in Japanese, I'm not too sure. But yeah, with the addition of the Rotom Pokedex, it seems like a really interesting twist in the Pokemon anime. Next we cut into a scene where we see a beware, just like in episode 1, that's probably the same one that scared Ash off in episode 1, but we also see it with a Mimikyu. And I guess um, beware and Mimikyu are friends because we'll definitely see them later on in the episode. Next, Ash goes to school and shows off his new Rotom Pokedex to the classmates. Everyone is surprised and astounded by it. Uh, Sophocles actually wants to, this is a pretty funny scene, Sophocles actually wants to open up the Rotom Pokedex and examine its uh, internals, which is pretty funny. Uh, the Rotom Pokedex definitely does not want that, and I guess Sophocles is the Alola version of Clement, because both of them are into gadgets and uh, technology. Afterward, Professor Kukui um, tells the class that it's time for them to go catch their own Pokemon, which is a good opportunity for Ash, because Ash does not have any uh, Alolan Pokemon three episodes in. So they go out to catch some new Pokemon, and then we cut to Team Rocket encountering Mimikyu. This is a pretty awesome scene. And when I first saw this scene, I knew for right from the start that one of Team Rocket, either Jess, Jesse or James, would catch Mimikyu, because it makes so much sense since Mimikyu is so much like Pikachu and very appearance-wise that is and Jesse and James really 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 want to catch Ash's Pikachu but they can never get it. so what's the next thing what's the next best thing get a Mimikyu so um with Team Rocket they definitely want to catch that Mimikyu just like I predicted uh but they don't have any other Pokemon besides Meowth and Wobbuffet so they sent Meowth to use Fury Swipes against the Mimikyu but obviously you know Fury Swipes normal type and Mimikyu is a ghost fairy, so that doesn't work at all. And Meowth actually lifts up the cloth, the veil on Mimikyu, and it looks like some gas blew out of his cloth, and it actually sent Meowth into like an illusion, which is really cool. I don't know if this is true in the games, if like if you can remove his cloth in the game and like it has like some kind of effect in battle, but in, at least in the anime, if you open up its uh, veil underneath, then you get sent into an illusion, and in Meowth's illusion, it's pretty funny, he uh, falls in love with a Glaceon, a Gardevoir, and a Lopunny, and he's like running towards them, trying to get them. But obviously, you know, Team Rocket snaps them out of it, and he was really confused about it, pretty funny stuff. And I guess he was, cry he was actually crying, because 
I guess the illusion was so real that he he was pissed off that he was awakened from this illusion. You know, he had his hopes and dreams broke. You know, Pokemon, they can't fall in love, you know. Especially a uh, Team Rocket to be out, you can't fall in love at all. And this episode, it wouldn't be a Pokemon episode without Ash and Team Rocket encountering. So, uh, Team Rocket hides while they see Ash and the gang come up. And Ash actually sees the Mimikyu and wants to catch it for himself. But when Pikachu actually uses Iron Tail on it, it has no effect. Probably because of Mimikyu's ability. It basically acts like a substitute on the first hit, so the first attack did no damage. And you actually see a uh, Mimikyu putting up a good fight against Pikachu, being able to slap it around uh, and use its Shadow Claw to uh, reflect against Pikachu's Electro Ball, which definitely got Team Rocket's attention. So that just further proves that Team Rocket is going to catch that Mimikyu since it saw it perform so well against Ash's Pikachu in battle. And that's what exactly what they do. They come up, they do their little... Uh, Team Rocket speech and it looks like Mimikyu is actually going to be cooperative as Mimikyu protects uh, Meowth from Pikachu's Electro Ball and Jesse is about to direct Mimikyu to use an Electro Ball sorry a Shadow Ball but then the Beware from early in the episode comes sn snatches them up and takes them away which is pretty funny I don't know what this Beware's problem is but it looks like this might be the change or the equivalent of them blasting off again for this episode since uh, Beware just randomly took Team Rocket and took them away somewhere else. And that was basically episode 3, so yeah, kind of a wacky episode. Now with episode 4, we see um, a bunch of Pokemon in the sky. We saw uh, a Picky Peck, uh, we also saw a Trumbeak, and one Rowlet, which is obviously going to be... An important part of this episode because you know when something stand Pokemon stands out is obviously going to be important in the episode. So apparently, in Alola, Pokemon can just grab whatever fruit they want and the residents don't mind. So all the picky pet grab food, but the Rowlet grabs a bell instead, and that's going to come into play later. We then cut to Ash finding a Grubbin, and he's going to battle the Grubbin. Uh, Pikachu uses a Thunderbolt and tries to catch the Grubbin. Unfortunately, it does not work and the Grubbin escapes underground. Afterwards, the Grubbin uses String Shot and attacks the Pikachu, damaging it enough to not battle again. And I guess this is part of the notion that Pikachu has reset back to, you know, level 5 or something like that because, you know, he's not level 100 anymore and he can't, Ash can't catch a freaking Grubbin, but, you know, it's not a big deal. It's expected with this anime in the beginning that Pikachu is going to be weak, so I'm not too bothered by it. The next scene, we see Team Rocket actually being held hostage against uh, the Beware and the Mimikyu. So yeah, the Mimikyu and the Beware are buddies. Jesse is frantically throwing Pokeballs trying to catch Mimikyu, but Mimikyu is having none of that, you know, smacking it back with its tail. And uh, you actually see James's Luxury Ball. I think that's a Luxury Ball. It's like black with uh, yellow stripes around it. And he's like, oh, I guess I have no Pokeballs left. I'll use James's Special Luxury Ball. And actually, when she throws it, it actually works. And it catches Mimikyu. So, you know, sad day for James. But Jesse catches a Mimikyu this episode. And it's kind of funny because Team Rocket actually catches a Pokemon before Ash does, which I think is a first for Pokemon. So when Jesse tries to get the Mimikyu in the Pokeball, you know, Beware just puts her back in her spot and gives Team Rocket a bunch of delicious honey. So. I don't know what the Beware uh, deal is. I don't know what its intentions are, but it looks pretty interesting. It wants to keep Team Rocket around, so we'll see in future episodes what this Beware really wants. Maybe um, James will catch the Beware. We'll see about that. Or, you know, the Beware is like a motherly figure, and perhaps that uh, it just wants to take care of some people. I don't know. Later on, we see a scene with all the Picky Peck the Trumbeak, and the one Rowlet giving food to, I guess, its father, which is the Two Cannon, I think, how you say? Two Cannon, which is the evolution of Picky Peck and Trumbeak. And I guess uh, the tr the Trumbeak is mad that the Rowlet could not actually bring it food, but actually bought it like a bell instead. And as we can see here, the, the Rowlet is definitely the, the, the youngest of the family and the most useless of the family. And I guess Two Cannon is kind of disappointed in Rowlet since it doesn't live up to its expectations like the other Picky Peck and Trumbeak. So Rowlet goes off to find some more food to try to redeem itself. And lo and behold, the Rowlet sees Mallow's Bonsuite and actually thinks it's a piece of fruit and goes to attack it. But 
obviously, you know, Bob Sweet just deflects it multiple times, in fact. And, and obviously, Ash being Ash, he has to save the Rowlet from getting hurt. And uh, actually gives it some food. So, you know, some bonding with the Pokemon. Once you see this, once you see a Pokemon that Ash hasn't caught and it's giving it food, it's giving it love, it's pretty obvious that Ash is going to catch that Pokemon, it, especially in the earlier episodes when Ash does not have an Alolan Pokemon yet. So a after Rowlet stuffs itself with food, Ash wants to catch it with a Pokeball, but Rowlet doesn't have any of that. He grabs a watermelon and goes off to two cannon to give the watermelon back. Now, once Beware finally leaves, Jesse is finally able to obtain the Mimikyu and the Pokeball, but the the flock of Picky Peck and Trumpik actually go into the cave where Jesse and James is and grabs all the food that they have. Uh, so Team Rocket's pissed off, and they they're actually going to chase after them to catch the those Pokemon and actually get all those fruit. Next, we see a kind of a flashback from Two Cannon when he's um, taking care of his eggs. And all of the, he has six eggs, all of them turn into Picky Peck, and one of them happened to be Rowlet, so I don't know how that really works. Maybe he found that egg and assumed it was his, but actually wasn't, so Rowlet's actually the adoptive son of this two cannon. But I guess it's nice that two cannon still keeps Rowlet around. And once Rowlet brings the watermelon, you know, he gets a lot of praise from two cannon and Trumbeak, so that was a pretty nice scene. Next we see Ash and Mallow arrive, and it looks like Rowlet really uh is into ash so more proof that ash is going to catch this new rallet um but then obviously you know team rocket is on the way too and team rocket actually casts a net to to capture all the picky peg and also all the fruit as well and then um jesse debuts that she has her new mimikyu and the mimikyu and uh ash's pikachu do battle and obviously mimikyu has the upper hand because pikachu is back to reset level five but Rowlet comes to save the day as when Mimikyu and Pikachu are fighting, Rowlet uh, uses its claws to slash the net, freeing all the Picky Peck and the fruit as well. So returning back to the battle of Mimikyu and uh, Pikachu, Pikachu is actually in the, has, has a disadvantage right now, but Rowlet actually comes and I think he uses Leaf Storm against Mimikyu. I think that's the move, I'm not sure. But Rowlet uses Leaf Storm and uh, rescues Pikachu. Afterwards, he uses Thunderbolt and basically defeats the Mimikyu. And it looks like they were going to blast off again, but Beware comes in again and grabs Team Rocket. And I guess takes him back to the cave. So this is the second time where Ash does not send Team Rocket blasting off again. But in fact, the Beware takes Team Rocket, I guess, back to their cave. So we'll definitely see that Beware again. Probably James is going to catch it. That's just my prediction. And afterwards, once we see Rowlet, you know... um. Rowlet's family saw Rowlet save the day, he gets a lot of praise for it, and Ash actually says goodbye to the Rowlet because, you know, Ash being Ash, he doesn't want to break away a Pokemon from its happy family, so uh, Ash starts walking away, and the Rowlet is actually really sad, which is kind of a uh, somber moment, but then Toucanon actually nudges Rowlet to go go with Ash because, you know, Ash is a good trainer, and Toucanon, even though Rowlet is not his real son, he wants the best for Rowlet. So he, go, he tells Rowlet, go, go with Ash. So Rowlet goes after Ash and goes into his backpack again. So I guess that's going to be a running gag. Uh, if Rowlet's ever outside of his Pokeball, he'll hide inside Ash's bag. And the episode ends off with Ash finally catching his first alone Pokemon, which is a Rowlet. I mean, which is all right. I guess he can't catch Poplio because Lana already has a Poplio. So it makes sense that he would catch a Rowlet. Ash also might catch a Litten as well because we saw... Uh, multiple appearances of the same Litten. So, and I don't think uh, any of Ash's friends in the Pokemon school has a Litten, so we might see Ash catching a Litten as well in the future. That's just my guess. So yeah, that basically summarizes episode 3 and 4. Epi uh, these two episodes were a lot better than episode 1 and 2, because I guess episode 1 and 2 were just introducing the new region, introducing new characters, and uh, these two episodes had a lot more comedy, you know, a lot more action as well because we see ash actually doing some battle against pokemon in these two episodes we actually see two captures we see jesse catching the mimikyu and ash catching the Rowlet. so yeah episode three and four were pretty good hopefully we'll see some more good stuff in episode five and onward what do you guys think about episode three and four let me know in the comments down below and i'll see you guys next time peace